Hello everyone, welcome to NPTEL course on Rural Water Resource Management. This is week 11, lecture three. In this week, we have been following rules and regulations and databases to collect data that can help us in understanding the rural water resources. We have actually looked at the key concepts of rural water resource management. And now we are at a stage to collect data to understand further for each and everyone's specific research area or management area. For example, if you are located in Shillong um, or in uh, Kashmir, a particular district, you would like to have only that data for rural water management. And that is what we are looking at in these uh, lecture series. Uh, how to collect data. We have looked at collecting data from uh, publications, uh, NGO reports, manuals, et cetera. Then we looked at state agencies that collect data. So state agencies collect multiple data sets. We are not going to go into all the data sets. For now, we've understood that there are locations where you can collect data for state. In today's lecture, we will focus on the data that needs to be collected from the water balance method that we discussed in class earlier. So as per the water balance equation, we have a del S, which is the change in storage, um, is uh, equal to the precipitation plus your Q in, which is your runoff coming in. Uh, and which is given here, minus your Q out is the runoff which is going out, uh, minus your ET, which is your evapotranspiration that is caused because of plants transpiring, and also uh, your um, evaporation from open surfaces. Then we have G in, which is your groundwater in, and G out, which is your groundwater out. So you would need to close the water budgets which means you need to get all these data to close the water budget, estimate each and every part, and then you close the water budget so that at the end of the day, you can estimate the net storage in the rural village. Again, the storage could be surface water storage or your uh, groundwater storage. Uh, since we are looking at rural water resource management, most of the water is stored at a village level. It is mostly stored as a groundwater. And there are some surface storage things like check dams, uh, uh, ponds, lakes, um, recharge ponds, percolation ponds, all these things. We will also look at uh, the uh, major state-wise where they could store data, for example, as uh, a rural water database. So there are multiple data sets that we saw as per this water equation. One is your precipitation, which is rainfall. Uh, and then you have your evapotranspiration known as ET, soil moisture from storage, SM, uh, and surface water storage, del S or Q uh, in, and then the dis river discharge going out is Q out. You can also have the groundwater in. So in today's lecture, uh, we will look at one particular centralized database, okay? Uh, so when I say state and central, uh, there is two things. One is that the data all is kept at a state level and it is managed by a state level, which means the state agency pays for it. In, to, in today's lecture, we understand that even though there are state agencies, it has to be supported mostly by the central agency. Like the Tamil Nadu government, we saw that we have the ENVIS website, but it is under the uh, Ministry of Forest and Climate Change uh, from the central government. <coughs> and then there is data.gov.in websites and all. So for this aspect, the uh, Indian uh, water resource um, agencies, 
have created one database where all the uh, data that is collected from the central agencies or the central uh, government agencies is stored. Well, for example, the central agencies for rainfall is your IMD, which is uh, the Inter Indian Meteorological Department. Uh, and then the evapotranspiration is also from IMD or it can be from agricultural agency. Your soil moisture uh, can also be from either these surface water is from CWC, which is the Central Water Commission. The groundwater is from groundwater board. So you could see that the central agencies are always there to collect these data and they could be stored in this centralized database that we're going to look at. So it is called WRIS, the India Water Resource Information System. So India WRIS is what it is called, okay? So it is a multi-source and multi-data platform for water management. Multi-source because one uh, source is rainfall, one source is your groundwater, et cetera. So all these sources are mapped in. There is also another meaning for sources where it comes from, which is your multi-data. Uh, it can come from your um, state agencies, it can come from the local agencies, NGOs, etc. some of the data, and or your space agencies, which is your ISRO uh, and other data boards. So you need to be careful in understanding these uh, linkages between the data. Uh, it is not only one data source, it can be multi-source data and multi-data uh, source, okay? So multi-source data means uh, where the data is coming and multi-data means what is it talking about? Is it rainfall, groundwater, et cetera? So just for groundwater, as I said, you can have data coming from Central Groundwater Board and you can also have data coming from the State Groundwater Board, okay? So if you look at these differences, uh, you can easily capture um, that there is a lot of data uh, and you could use it very wisely for rural water management. Let's look uh, at a few for our water budgets. I'm not going to go through all the databases uh, because that itself will be a couple of weeks uh, lectures, but uh, I'll just show you some so that you get uh, understanding on how to use these websites. Okay, rainfall. So the first uh, data that we're going to look at is rainfall. The key agencies are IMD, which is the Indian Meteorological Department, uh, and also ISRO, which is the space agency that gives you the data. Okay, so both of these could be clubbed together as one data, or they could be separate. IMD can be separate and ISRO can be separate. So ISRO, um, uh, has uh, an agency called NRSE, National Remote Sensing Center, and multiple agencies are there under ISO, like SAC, Space Application Center, etc. So these centers collect these raw satellite data and convert it to a satellite product so that you could easily uh, run these analysis for uh, across the country. So what you could do here is you have your state agencies and NGOs, WRIS, et cetera. Uh, you could uh, look at um, um, the uh, different sources for rainfall data and you can map them for your village or uh, rural area as per your need. So with this, uh, let me open this uh, website so that we could um, um, share uh, what it is in this uh, database. Just because of the internet, uh, I have um, just put the same thing search here in the Google, India Water Resource Information System. I click search, and the first thing that comes up is do India WRIS. If you click it, this opens, okay? Uh, if, if it is fast, then I'll just let it. So it does take some time, the internet uh, bandwidth and et cetera. So give it some time <laughs> and you will have this um, uh, website open. Okay, so the India Water Resource Information System, uh, the same as I showed in my uh, slide. Uh, and also there are multiple tabs that work for the database. It is one uh, under the Government of India, Ministry of Jal Shakti and Department of Water Resources, uh, Research and Development. Uh, so Ministry of, uh, it is a ministry and then you have a department. So all these come under the logo of the Government of India. Um, and you could see that multiple, multiple uh, 
uh, you know, uh, links are given, databases are given, uh, new data sources are given. I'm just coming down to show you what it is. Uh, but uh, just to stick on to today's <laughs> lecture, I will go to home, which is this web page. And then about WRIS, those who want to read about it can read it. But I'm going to go to water data. We are looking at mostly water data. And I'm going to go to rainfall. So rainfall comes under the hydrometeorological. So go down four points and then go to the right. So how you navigate in this website is you have to move your cursor onto water data. Do not click. If you move your cursor on top of it, the data populates. Uh, and then just come down. Do not click the mouse. Just come down and then you will see uh, rainfall populating automatically when your mouse is there. Mouse is there. Now you could uh, click rainfall because the arrow mark is shown. Um, so what did you see is in hydrometeorological, you saw multiple uh, databases, right? So it is not only your um, um, uh, rainfall, but also evapotranspiration, soil moisture, and these things. All these we would look into this week's lecture. So I've opened the WRIS, I've opened the hydrometeorological rainfall. Once you open it, this is the image that comes, which is a dynamic image. Dynamic because you can move it, you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, and also the data can change, okay? So this is the first point I would like to share with you. This is an India map with uh, rainfall and the grid coloring uh, of the rainfall pattern is given like this. So zero to 600 millimeters per year is red. And wherever it is blue, uh, it is uh, more than 1,800 mm rainfall. And as per class, you would know where these regions are. Mostly it's the Western Ghats along the Ganges Plain uh, and uh, regions of West Bengal and the Brahmaputra region. But most of Central India and the Northern are still under uh, zero to 600, 800 mm rainfall, which is kind of scarce. All these are in district level heads. Okay, so if you could zoom in uh, and as a case study, uh, I will zoom into uh, Maharashtra. Okay, let me go back uh, a step. Uh, you have all these districts. So when you move your cursor, these districts will uh, turn bold. You see the line changing color. Okay, and then it turns into a finger. When it turns into a finger, you can click. Okay, so um, this is on this side. On your right side, what you see is area of focus because whole India is shown in this image, it says India, and the data monthly cumulative rainfall from 0 01 June 21 to 27 March 2022, which is uh, two days ago, uh, using IMD data <coughs> grid. So up to two days ago, the <coughs> rainfall is being calculated, and an average annual rainfall is given here. Okay, The normal rainfall for the entire country is around 115, um, 1,115 millimeters of normal rainfall. Actual is how much is it happening now? So normal is the average. It could be a 10 year average rainfall. Uh, and what is the actual is a little bit less. So we are uh, slightly in the negative. That is what percentage deviation from normal is 5%. So you have your actual rainfall data as the line. You could see there um, uh, the normal, sorry, the normal is millimeters in, in the line. Uh, the actual uh, is less than normal, uh, which, which is the red color, and actual, which is greater than normal, which is the blue color. You can click and remove those, whatever you want to see. Uh, and as I said, you, you really need the rainfall for both the seasons. And this is also coming in the uh, line axis. <coughs> okay. <laughs> So you could download this data. You can look at it as a line chart. Now I've converted the column graph into a line chart to see where the rainfall goes above the normal. And you could see that what is happening is the rainfall is slightly going up and down. Two peaks are happening rather than one single peak, which used to happen uh, in, the, in the normal average period. Uh, but here you could see that it is changing slightly. Uh, and there is a slight uh, elongation of the rainfall, uh, which is like the rainfall is above average during the non-rainy season. 
But most importantly, uh, during your summer uh, season when the crops are growing uh, and also the monsoon season, there is a uh, less rainfall recorded as per the normal. Um, then you could uh, look at on your left, you have different uh, applications and layers. Uh, application is rainfall, so don't click on that. Uh, if you want to go back and change it, you can click here. I normally would uh, pull this uh, thing up and then go to here and change it if you want to change it. Okay. Uh, these are just tools to move your map back and forth uh, and see where you want to locate the map. Uh, and then these are the reports and registrations if it is needed. Normally, you need to have a login account, uh, but sometimes just the data you can get, uh, <coughs> the non-sensitive data you can get without login. You can also, the page is divided into three um, um, small panels. Uh, you can also move the panel if you want to see a bigger picture of the area. And then you have all these. See, you could uh, change it to a line graph. You can download the data as a PDF or an, uh, an Excel uh, file, which is a comma separated value file. Uh, uh, it is not uh, dot Excel, it will be in dot CSV, but you can change it to Excel. And then you can make it big or expand as needed. So now I've, I've expanded it to see how it is. Just click the X mark, it will go back. So this is how you can look at the data. And then I'll show you how to zoom into a particular state and then collect the data. You can see here all the states are given, uh, all the regions, the EU, uh, union territories, everything is given. So we have around 37 states and union territories, including uh, your um, Andaman, uh, Nicobar Islands, etc. Okay, so I've clicked Kashmir and it went there. Suppose you accidentally click a particular state, you can come back by going on the top and then click India. Uh, it will come back to India whole whole scale. So here's how the data is given and the uh, average monthly cumulative um, rainfall information from this data is given, cumulative. Okay, so monthly cumulative for one year is this much. Not monthly, we get 1000 a month, that's too much. Okay, so it is an annual taken at monthly data, monthly cumulative, you add every month and then uh, per year you get the information. It's kind of an average. Good. So uh, now we will see uh, a particular state. Uh, but before that, let me go to the uh, left side panel. You have different layers. If you click the layer button, you will get um, uh, what layers you want in this boundary. For example, you can have base layers. Uh, you can have street maps or Bhuvan maps. Depending on your internet speed, just let the default because it will pick the right uh, map for you. Uh, and in the overlays, do you want state boundaries? If you don't want state boundaries, you can remove it. See, now it is gone. Uh, or you can have uh, basin boundaries, which are the major water boundaries. Now you can see it coming slowly. I can take the state boundaries so that you can see the blue line. These are the water basin boundaries. You can also add sub basins uh, depending on the size. If you zoom in, it will slowly populate. It takes a lot of internet bandwidth because there's a lot of sub basins. So I'm going to remove it. And then the India boundaries, India rainfall heat map. So this is what is called the base layer. What is behind the data is called the base. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, it may consume a lot of uh, power. So don't um, overdo it. Okay. Uh, if you add too much on it, then you will, uh, the layers may collapse. Let's say for example, uh, you are having the open street map. Uh, if you want Bhuvan, just click Bhuvan. Uh, it will slowly populate. Why is this information needed? Is because when you zoom into a particular location and you want to see where it is located, it is better to have that um, um, zoomed in. Okay. So, for example, if I'm zooming into Jaipur, uh, I know where Jaipur is, so I can I can put that data there. So let me go back to overlays and then I click the heat map uh, for rainfall. Only India is given. You could see the full India data set is there, uh, including all the uh, boundaries of India North uh, and other regions. So it is, it is very important as an Indian citizen, you should use the correct rainfall um, data from the government of India 
and the boundaries are also given as per the government of india okay so this is uh, if you want to zoom in you can do use the plus sign you can go in for example i'm going into the maharashtra region you can zoom out by clicking the minus sign and this is to zoom into an area when you click this uh, you can actually uh, draw a box. See, I'm drawing a box here uh, and I want to go further in. So now you could see the district boundaries coming up. The state is, is, is still there, but slowly the district boundaries are coming up. Uh, if you want to zoom in again, you can do like this. I'm just drawing more boxes uh, and you can see that block level data is also shown. So this is a block, this is one block, uh, multiple blocks, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> I'll show you how to extract the data once we give a tour of this uh, website. So when you give full extent, say sometimes some, somewhere you've gone in and you don't know how to come out, you have to click zoom out, zoom out, zoom out again. Uh, but if you want the correct uh, way to see it, you can just click full extent. It will take you to the Indian boundary. Then you can clear your uh, map selections. Sometimes you have, would have drawn a box you have clicked on a data, particular data, you can clear it. Uh, and then you can also do a map comparison between years, okay? So uh, I'll just click and show you for the sake of it. So I've clicked map comparison and two maps are opening side by side. And give it time because the, rain the data is populating. You can see the blue line moving. Uh, it is the rainfall data populating. So now what is the difference? It is the same, okay? You could see this as the same color, this as the same color. The date is the same, date is the same. But the idea is you could change this date for, for a particular season. Uh, and you could run the slider to do the comparisons. How was it before? How was it after? Okay. Normally, this should you should be able to change it, but they, they're still working on this comparison. So it does take some time or you can see the full extent in both the images. Normally it should not be mirrored. So this is the same as uh, Sentinel and NASA data, how they have two windows. On one side, you can have 2022 data. On one side, you can have 2021 data. And now you could do the comparison. So these are the buttons that are available. Okay. Uh, and um, um, uh, just because you may accidentally click it, I'm just going to show you uh, what else is there. You can cl click the applications so to bring back it. Okay, so admin admin layer is the boundaries. Okay, the small lines that you see. Uh, if suppose you don't want to see the admin boundary, uh, you want the basin boundary, you can click the basin and the admin will go off. And now all this would be at a basin level. Okay, so I'm going to click one particular basin and it will populate. So now the India is still focused on India. You can see the rainfall data, but I'm going to click on one uh, basin. So when I move the finger on the Ganges, you can see that it turns like a pointer uh, finger. If you move the mouse and then I just clicked on it, now the Ganges is come. How do I know it is the Ganges basin? Because here you have the India uh, Ganges uh, name, India slash Ganga. So now if I zoom in further to the sub-basin level, the sub-basin name will come, okay? So now what is the rainfall in the Ganges? It is 1025 millimeters. Is it same as the India <coughs> data or lower? It is lower than the normal average of India. India is 1115, whereas this is 1025. This is a normal. The actual is 1097. So we're having better rainfall uh, uh, for the Ganges Basin, and there is a plus 7% deviation. So now uh, the difference between the average and the actual rainfall is positive by 7%. And that is what is given here for your information. Okay, so we have seen the Ganga, Ganges Basin, and you could see uh, where the data is coming from. So where is the data coming from? Uh, let me go back to admin boundary so that we have uh, the whole of India and every um, uh, state boundaries mapped. So now the state boundaries are there. Uh, you can um, um, go back, uh, view, like click this button. See if you, uh, since I click this, uh, the, the box tool is still there. 
if you want to remove the box tool, just click the box again. So for example, I'm zooming in, I'm drawing a box here. I'm zooming into that part, okay? Uh, it's like same as zooming in in your uh, PPTs and your other presentations. If you want to go back to the original view, you can go like this or click full extent. And if you want to uh, bring back that tool out from this map, the box tool, you can click the box again. Now there's no box. Okay, so now we're back at 1115 uh, millimeters. Look at the units, it is millimeters. The units are very important when you do these comparisons and data. So be uh, uh, please be careful about this. The second thing I would like to showcase today is the source. Do you want all the agencies, which you can click, all and all the agencies data would be used for this map, uh, or you could just say IMD grids or NRSC. So IMD is your Indian Meteorological Department grid. So it is divided into uh, grids, the Indian um, um, region. For example, this is, uh, it'll be like horizontal and vertical lines. And then you have grids, okay? It's equally spaced. So this is what grid one, two, it, it's very small, <coughs> not this big, but just for drawing, I have done it. So this is what a grid is. And then you have your um, uh, timestamps. Uh, how often do you want the data? Uh, if you click on the timestamp, is it daily, monthly, or yearly? Again, you want yearly uh, just to say that I want to uh, look at data uh, for a particular region. You can swap between the time steps. In the next class, I will actually show you how to uh, look at data for a particular region. Let's, uh, if you do daily, be careful, you need to have good internet and good space to store the data because every day you're going to collect data, right? So I put monthly and you can put a selection of when to when. Uh, that is what happens in the start date uh, area. And um, let's just click one date. And then the, if you click it, it is the end date. So for starting date, end date, and what method do you want? You want the sum? average or min max. So let's uh, see uh, average, uh, and then I'll just pick a month and then click submit. Now the data is going to update, and then you will see the data from 2015 to 2022. Uh, but again, as I said, I will uh, explain each of these in the next class uh, so that uh, we can take one example of the data. If you see here, the data has been populated and the rainfall has been given as a monthly uh, data and an average, monthly average, okay? And that is why you see the sinusoidal uh, waves. The average is up, down, up, down, because it is a uh, rainy season, non-rainy season, alternating, alternating, and coming, right? And then you have, uh, for the whole country, the average monthly rainfall is 102 uh, M in the normal range. The actual for the last year has been um, uh, 155 mm and a 53% positive deviation. So that's why I said uh, it's always better to do uh, yearly uh, so that you remove the noise. The undulating is what we call uh, noise. Uh, you, can, you can click on the date and the date is, you don't see the months anymore because it is going to be a year and you can say average or sum, uh, you could say average. So I've taken two years and then you see the data that is populating. Uh, you can, you can uh, take off the rainfall data if you want, the stations uh, where the data is being collected, okay? So all these are coming. And now once you have the data also, if you come down, you have the states. Uh, if you click the state, it goes to district and from district block until this level. So I will uh, show this in the next class. Now, for now, this class, I've showed you how to go to this website, which is the WRIS website, and also to zoom in and zoom out, use all these tools for your data on your uh, water budget equations. With this, I will see you in the next class. Thank you.